my son wins. Ooh, hello friends, hope you are well. Today I'm going to be painting something from my backlog, this quite spectacular Nazgul on a Thel Beast. I got this as part of the Pelennor Fields box set a couple of years ago, but only ever got round to painting the good half of the box, meaning the not evil side. And recently I've had a bit of a Lord of the Rings itch going again, so I think it's time to finally give this mini some love in. I've got a fair few Lord of the Rings minis actually, and I've never played with them, because no one else I know has any. In hopes of finally playing some games of this however, I'm going to paint up our Nazgul here, and use him as the foundation of an evil force my friend can use to fight against me. Then it's just a simple matter of harassing him constantly until he buys some of these minis also. Easy peasy. Now, the first obstacle I came up against was which neck pose to use. I prefer the downward sloping neck as I think it will look a bit more ominous when finished, but I also want to use this head with the armoured piece. But these two bits don't go together, so I have to do a little bit of surgery to get them compatible. And that's close enough. There are a couple of small gaps here and there, but I can fix that easily with a bit of sprue glue. Next, it was time to stick on these reins, one of which I had broken earlier. Oh well. I quickly repair that using a little bit of plastic cement and a very delicate touch, as these are super fragile, casualistic, expialidocious. <laughs> I'm not gluing down our Witch King yet to make painting him a bit easier, but with our construction done, I have to say I am already in love with this mini. Honestly, this is so cool. I can't believe it's taken me so long to paint him now I'm looking at it, because it's just so awesome. I remember being at the cinema watching the Two Towers on my birthday as a kid, and the scene in the Dead Marshes where you see the hood of the Nazgul, and then the camera pans down to show him sitting on top of the Felbies. Epic and this mini is just as epic. Anyway, I get him primed in black, since the majority of colours for this are quite dark, and it is time to paint. Woo! Now, the flesh colour used in the reference art is basically black, but I want to change that up and go for a dramatically different colour of... dark grey. Eshin grey is my colour of choice for this, as it seems to have a very subtle hint of blue in there, quite befitting of the fell beast in my opinion. I paint this onto the appendages on both sides of the wings, and I'm a little bit messy here actually, but it's not a big deal, I'll clean that up afterwards. For the scaly flesh, I only paint this onto the upper portions of the body, neck and tail, as I want the lower parts to have a paler colour to them. His chin gets a little tickle of this for good luck also. I give a couple of coats to this to get a fairly even coverage going, and I'm liking the look of this colour actually. I think we've chosen well here. Hmm, moving on. So, remember moments ago when I said I'd prime the mini in black because all the colours of this are pretty dark? So that was a lie. Yeah, I've decided to go a bit paler than I'd anticipated for the flesh in the wings and the underside of this beast. But I think it will look a bit more realistic. As realistic as a flying weird dragon thing can be anyway. Karak stone will be the base colour for these lower portions, and I'm probably going to have to apply like 15 layers of this to get the coverage I want over the black. It's looking pretty awful on the first coat, but it'll get a bit better with each pass over, is what I'm telling myself anyway. I feather the paint out a little over the transition, as I think a straight blocked out transition between the grey and stone colour would look a bit weird. This looks a bit more natural for flesh. Anyway, to avoid making too much cleanup work for myself, I paint the borders around the wing appendages carefully first, and then I can just fill in the rest quickly with a larger brush. And much like the underside of the flesh, I have to give the wings 15,000 coats of this to cover up that black primer. But eventually, they're looking pretty good. I'll let the wings dry properly, and then continue with their next steps, as I've abandoned my blue tack mountain system, and I'll need to handle this mini for a while longer. On with the wings. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to slap on some Agrax Surfshade all over these wings. Usually it's not good to apply washes to big flat areas, but I'm hoping these wings will have just enough texture to pick up the wash and prevent it from pooling awkwardly. And while I'm at it, I figure I might as well slap on some to the underside of the flesh, and I'm basically experimenting at this point because I don't know how the wash is going to look on these surfaces when it's dried. There's a good chance it will look like a cloudy, muddy mess, which will mean having to reapply all those paint colours again. But there's also a chance it adds a bit of depth and doesn't completely ruin everything. I guess we'll find out shortly. 
And while that dries, I also whack on a bit of known oil to the grey flesh to add a bit of definition to those scales especially, as well as the musculature on the ribs and legs. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at those washes now they're dried, and the wings are looking surprisingly okay actually. All the little lumps and bumps have picked up the wash without pulling horribly. Wish my lumps and bumps could do that. And the underside of the belly looks decent. There are a few places where it's pulled slightly, but nothing we can't clean up later on. So yeah, I'd say the washes were reasonably successful here, and we haven't managed to ruin the miniature yet. But there's still plenty of time for that to happen, so moving on. For my next step, I'm going to try and revive a bit of colour on the wings and darken down underside by first dry brushing on some Ushabti bone. I'll have to repaint these appendages as they get ruined by the dry brushing, and it only took me like an hour of trembling claw hand painting to get those on originally, so, <laughs> you know. Once that's done, I then add another layer of dry brushing with some paler Ulthuan Grey. This colour is quickly becoming one of my most used ones actually, and soon I will let it battle to the death with Dryad Bark for the ultimate Swamp Rat Super Paint Extraordinaire of the Month award, and this competition will be sponsored by the moon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, finally I give the grey flesh a bit of flavour with a light brushing of Rust Grey, and I'm going super light with this as it's quite a bluey grey, so I just want to add a little bit of steez and pizzazz without changing the colour of the mini too dramatically. So here we go chaps and chapettes, it's looking quite messy in some places to be fair, but we still have some work left to pull it all together. Oh, and yes, I painted the appendages back in quickly, it was really fun painting those back in with my claw hand, trying not to get paint on the much paler wings, I hope I get to do that again, Woo! For our next job, I quickly paint on the spines using a bit of rakar flesh, and then do the same for the big old talons on his claws. I then darken them down with a little coating of Agrax Surfshade, and you're there in your home screaming at the screen, Swamp Radio, Swamp Radio, why didn't you just use a darker colour? Because I just like doing it this way, okay? Is that okay, Mum? Sorry, I've calmed down enough now to paint the saddle and reins here with a quick coat of Mournfang Brown. But that looks too light, and I hate it, so I go back over it with, you guessed it, Dryad Bark Baby, let's go, Woo! The helmet, or as I've taken to calling it, since this is a fell beast, the felmet, <laughs> had a little bit on the front here which had broken off, and I tried to glue it back on but it didn't really work so I've just left it off. But yeah, to paint the felmet, in case you didn't appreciate that joke the first time, I dry brush on a little smidgen of lead belcher, and I'm applying this very sparingly as I want it to look pretty dark and grungy still. Once that's dry, I splash around a bit of known oil to reinforce the shadows on the edge sections, and I also take this opportunity to run some known oil around the wing appendages and any other little grooves on the flesh which are crying out for some darkness, like me when I was an edgy teenager. In an attempt to tidy up the now pretty gnarly looking underside a bit, I'm going to add some quote unquote highlights in a striping manner across the neck belly and tail. First I use some screaming skull which is a bit closer to the original belly colour and then bring back the ultra and grey as a bit of a brighter stripy tone. And while I've got the screaming skull out I give a very slight highlight to the spines and claws and then also paint in the teeth too. This thing actually has surprisingly tiny teeth, they're quite cute actually, look at them. Mwah. For a final touch on the wings, I run a small amount of ulcer and grey on the edges, and then the very final thing we'll be painting on this bad boy is his pokey little tongue sticking out here. What's up? I always like to save the best until last, and this is the thing I've looked forward to painting most for some reason. So I colour it in with a splash of Cadian flesh tone, and that is it for this miniature. Here's how the fell beast is looking after all that. It looks okay, but I'm not entirely happy with it to be honest. I'll talk about why at the end of the video. Hopefully it will look better with the Witch King on top and attached to its base, but we'll see. Anyway, speaking of Witch Kings, the paint job for our little Grandpa Angmar here is going to be super simple. Since he's already black, all we need to do is paint in the metallics quickly using a bit more lead belcher. And again, I'm kind of dry brushing this on to leave a lot of the shadows from the black undercoat on these sections. Once it dries, it's looking a bit too shiny in some places, so I give it a soaking with some Nolan Oil to dull that down a bit. For his flaming sword, I'll be using some Uriel Yellow, Troll Slayer Orange, and Evil Sun Scarlet. I paint on the flames by first adding a bit of yellow at their base, some orange towards the middle, and some red towards the very tips of the flames. I also paint some orange over the blade, and run a bit of yellow down the middle of this to give the impression of the whole sword being on fire. 
I have to go back and forth with my colours for a while to get a decent looking effect and then it's on to the last bit of work for this mini. I told you it was going to be simple. As our robes are already black, I just go around the mini using a small amount of Thousand Suns Blue to add a highlight on any of the visible edges, folds, lumps, bumps and Donald Trumps and that is it. Now I'm watching this back I realised I forgot to paint the back of his saddle bit but you know just pretend I painted it with dried bark and there's no problem. Anyway, boom. Like I said, super simple, super quick, super sensual. I'll set him aside with our Felbies for now and whip up a quick base for them to hover over to get this mini finished. Right, so this is the base that comes with the mini. Pretty cool, but I wanted to add a bit more detail to it. So I'm taking this Rider of Rohan, which was one of the first minis I ever painted, as you can probably tell. And I'll chop this up a bit to use as scenery. I want the horse on its side like this, like it's sadly expired, but it sticks up a bit too much due to it being a rigid plastic shape. I thought about cutting it in half, but the plastic cement down the middle was too tough and I probably would have ended up injuring myself. So instead, I'll trim down some of this rockery and as much of the horse's side as I can. After a few minutes, I get fed up and give up with that. Oh no, sorry, I mean, I get it close to perfect, as always, and then glue that sucker down. I also started chopping up this rider of Rohan. I wasn't even going to use it at this point. I was just on a spree of destruction now, to be honest. But in the end, I decided to stick him down here with the horse. It kind of looks like the cuddling, but try to think of it as a hectic battlefield where they've somehow got all twisted up together in death. With my Rohirrim added as some unfortunate scenery, I slap on a load of my homemade mud mixture and then also poke in the shield for a bit of extra detail. I also add some of this mud on top of the horse and rider to give the impression of them being caked into the battlefield. Once that's dried, it gets a quick dry brushing to add a bit more depth and then I whack down some scatter and flock on top of some PVA. I'm realising now that I've done something very similar to this in any video I've made so far with a muddy, grassy base or diorama, but it's just because it works really well with minimal effort. I'll try to do something drastically different next time. Promise! I add a few little tufts of grass here and there, a little splattering of our favourite blood effect paint, and a quick rim job of Steel Legion Drab. Can I say that? I mean, I painted the rim of the base. Anyway, all those things, blah 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 blah, and this baby is finished. Let's see how it came out. So, my friends, what do you think? I've got mixed feelings about this mini, to be honest. As a whole and as a sum of its parts, I think it looks pretty good. But if I look too long, I see a bunch of things I don't like about it. The underside of the mini in particular is a bit of a mess and I struggle to get it looking decent. I always struggle to paint stuff like this where there's no clearly defined borders and you have to try and make them for yourself. So I had a bit of a mare with that. I also can't work out if the wings look good or if they're just looking a bit dirty. Maybe I shouldn't have used Agrax Surfshade and should have gone with some more pale grey tones instead, which probably would have looked better against the colour of the main body. I do quite like how the Witch King came out, however. I think he's looking pretty dashing. The Thousand Suns blue highlight on his robes might be a little much. I maybe should have chosen a darker blue, but they're still looking decent. The Flaming Sword is also looking quite cool. It's quite cool albeit a little rough around the edges. I'm also pleased with how the base came out. I think it's a lot more true to the Pelennor field to this mini fought in than the original base, which had a bunch of elven weapons and a shield on it. The horse's back leg is floating a bit awkwardly in the air, but again, I don't think it's a major issue. I can suspend disbelief to let it work in my head. Maybe it's got rigor mortis, maybe it's kicking out in its death throes, or maybe whoever made it just didn't really think about it that much until he watched it back on video. So yeah, bit of a mixed bag with this one. I wasn't sure if I'd upload this at first because I'm not entirely happy with how it came out, but I still had a lot of fun making it and do like a lot of things about it now it's finished. Also, I really just wanted to do my Nazgul impression. Spot on, eh? <laughs> Anyway, I'd like to revisit this model in the future. Maybe a year or so from now, I'll paint another one of these and see if I can get it looking a bit closer to what I'd hoped for. But for now, I have been a little rat from a swamp and I will see you very soon with another video.